In the previous installment, we looked at the PMU descriptors in the demo program. Well, now it's time to take a look at the rest of the program to see how to pull all these pieces together. First, let's take a high altitude view of Maine. Before it enters the endless loop, Maine calls a routine that sets up the real time clock and starts the PMU. Once the PMU is started, LED zero will begin to blink. That's what the PMU program does. But in the main loop, the core hits the snooze button on the RTC. Now this is a function of the RTC hardware, about which we'll have more to say just a little bit later. Then the core enables the interrupt for comparator one. That's the snooze comparator. And the very next thing the core does is go to sleep. It enters LP2 mode, and that's the last thing the core does. Meanwhile, the PMU is still working, blinking LED zero. After five seconds, the snooze interrupt fires and wakes the CPU. When the course finished running the service routine, it returns to the instruction after the one that put it to sleep. It executes a sequence of instructions that blinks the next three LEDs, LED one, LED two, and LED three in sequence. And then the program loops back to the top, hits the snooze button again, and goes back to sleep. Now, you may have noticed that we have the RTC performing two major tasks here. First, it's triggering activity in the PMU every half second via the prescaler compare interrupt. And second, it's waking the CPU every five seconds via the snooze alarm. And to understand these things, we need to briefly take a closer look at the RTC. Most embedded microcontrollers include some kind of real-time clock. Most often, this consists of a 32-bit counter that maintains a count of seconds since some well-defined epoch. Most real-time clock modules include one or more alarm registers that look for a match between the counter and the alarm register, and the Maxim RTC has these features as well. But the Maxim RTC has a couple of other tricks up its sleeve, so to speak. First, the RTC logic is driven by a 4096 hertz internal clock derived from the 32 kilohertz tuning fork crystal. So if you want to drive the main seconds counter with a 1 hertz clock, you have to configure the prescaler to divide the internal clock by 4096, or 2 to the 12. The prescaler will start at 0, count to 4095, then recycle to 0 and increment the main seconds counter. Now the Maxim RTC includes logic to fire and interrupt whenever a range of bits in the prescaler register are all zero. That's the prescaler mask, and we program it to consider only the low order 11 bits. So whenever the low order 11 bits are zero, the prescaler interrupt fires, and that happens twice a second, once when the prescaler contains zero, and once when the prescaler contains 800 hex. That's the prescaler interrupt, now the snooze alarm function. In the real world, a snooze alarm lets you get a few minutes of extra sleep after the alarm has sounded. You hit the snooze button and you can sleep another 10 minutes. Hit the button again and you get 10 minutes more. The snooze function in the Maxim RTC works the same. When the core sets the snooze bit, the RTC reads either the alarm register or the main counter register. It adds a preset number of seconds to that count and writes the result to the alarm register. When the alarm interrupt fires, the core can set the snooze bit again to set an interrupt to fire after the additional time interval has expired. Now finally, a word about interrupts in Maxim microcontrollers. Most peripherals contain an internal interrupt enable bit that allows the interrupt condition to flow to the nested vectored interrupt controller, or INVIC. The INVIC then interrupts the core if it has a vector for that particular interrupt. So configuring most interrupts in a Maxim microcontroller is a two-step process. You must enable the interrupt at the peripheral and then provide a vector to the interrupt service routine. So with this in mind, let's take a look at the RTC setup routine. It's the first function called by the main routine and now that we understand how the RTC works, it's not hard to understand. The first statement configures an object of RTC config T type. Most peripherals are configured by building a configuration object and then passing that object to an initialization routine. And that's how the RTC works. First, we load the compare count registers. Now, note that these values don't really matter. We don't use compare count zero and we'll be reloading compare count one every time we hit the snooze bit. Next, we configure the prescaler. We write a value of 2 to the 12, 
which tells the prescaler to give us a pulse to the main counter register once every second. The prescaler mask gets a value of 2 to the 11, so a prescaler interrupt will occur twice as fast as the counter, or 2 Hz. Next we set up the snooze function. The snooze count is configured to 5, meaning that 5 seconds will elapse after we hit snooze. The next instruction selects the snooze mode. Mode A causes the RTC to read the alarm register, add the snooze count, and write the result back to the alarm register. Mode B causes the RTC to read the seconds count register, add the snooze count, and write that result back to the alarm register. You can use Mode A if you need a precise time period between alarms, and use Mode B if you need a precise interval from the instant you hit snooze. For this application we really don't care too much, but we choose Mode B. The next line loads the configuration information into the RTC's registers. OK, now we're ready to handle interrupts. We enable the RTC prescaler interrupt that drives the PMU, but, but notice, we don't enable the interrupt in the INVIC. The PMU bypasses the INVIC and looks directly at the interrupt lines coming from the various peripherals. For this reason, this interrupt won't wake the main core and will only affect the PMU. The next line sets the vector for the compare alarm interrupt, but notice that we don't enable the interrupt at the peripheral, at least not yet. That comes later. Finally, we're ready to call the RTC start system routine and set the RTC running. Now back in main, we're ready to start the PMU. You just call PMU start, pass the channel number, a pointer to the descriptor list, and the address of a callback routine if you're using one. We're not, so that third parameter is null. In the main loop, we hit snooze. That loads the current time plus 5 seconds into the alarm register. Now, we enable the alarm interrupt in the RTC peripheral, and remember, in the setup routine we configured the INVIC vector for this interrupt. And then, we wait. Now when the interrupt fires, the core wakes and it branches to the RTC handler compare one function. This function has just two lines. The first disables the interrupt, and the second clears the interrupt flag. When the function returns to main, the lights sequence and the loop repeats by hitting snooze, re-enabling the interrupt, and then going back to sleep. And that's the behavior we're seeing. LED 0 blinks once per second, and every 5 seconds the other three LEDs blink in sequence. But the CPU is only running when the sequential LEDs are on. When it's just the one LED blinking, well that's the PMU. You can see why the PMU sometimes has delusions of being a CPU core, and I'm sure you can think of other applications where a half dozen fast, simple cores might come in handy, so go ahead, give it a try, and keep an eye out for our next video tutorial series. See you then!